me and Claire have come here to the University of Tasmania, which is where I work. I've spent a lot of time in this lab cleaning eagle bones, but that's another story. And what we're doing here is we're going to look at the physiology or the way that the birds are put together. Before we do that, James, I'd really like to talk about a question people ask me all the time, which is about the wingspan, the length between the two wingtips when they're stretched out. And I have heard so many different suggestions about how long that is. I mean, I think it's taller than me. I'm one meter 65. Yes. But some people say like, what is it like? two meters 90 or something? I mean, is that true? <laughs> two meters 90 is very big and too big for a wedge-tailed eagle. The biggest confirmed, it says confirmed, but it was from the 1930s, I think, where a bird, a female bird, that was two meters 84, which is wow. huge. We, the typical birds that we see are more around 190 to 240 is the biggest one I've measured. Okay, 240 is So still taller than us. Because that's Tasmanian wedge-tailed eagles, mm. isn't it? They're, is it? They're not as big in Aust uh, the mainland Australia. No, their wingspans are smaller. I just don't know exactly how much smaller. <laughs> so what about weight? How much does a Tasmanian wedge-tailed eagle weigh? From 3.5 to 5.5 kilograms. Wow. So as part of my research, I was measuring the weight of chicks, I call them chicks, but it was just before they fledged the nest, so they're still big birds. And the heaviest one of those was Erin, who was four and a half kilograms. So here it is, the Tasmanian wedge-tailed eagle. This one sadly isn't alive. Um, it's a female, uh, we can tell that because she's bigger. The males are much smaller than the females. And we also know that she's a young bird because around her head you can see this really light coloured feathers, and then also all the way down her chest, she's got a brownie color. She's not dark. The adults are really, really dark. So the two things you notice first about wedge-tailed eagle are the talons and the beak. So the beak is the tool used for tearing apart prey. So once the, the prey is already dead, they're gonna use their beak to tear off bits of meat and then eat it. So I've been bitten by eagles a few times and it doesn't actually hurt that much. So this isn't the tool that's used for killing. Down here is the tool that's used for killing, the talons. So they grab onto the prey and the strength of these talons is what kills it. So on their feet, they actually have four talons or claws, uh, three on the front and then the one on the back, which is called the hallux, which we think is the killing tool. That's what they use to puncture and kill their prey. So around the back here is where we can see the most distinguishing feature of wedge-tailed eagles, the tail. So we can't see right now because the eagle's perched, but if it was flying, the tail would look really long and wedge-shaped like a diamond. So if you found a feather that you think is from a wedge-tailed eagle, if it was really long, it's probably come from one of two places. So either the tail, so the tail is really long, but these feathers are normally very symmetrical. The other really long feather is found in the wing. So this part here is actually the primary feather, the longest, the fingers of the wing sticking right out. And these are very asymmetrical. The most important thing to wedge-tailed eagles is their eyesight. So there's a lot we don't know about how animals see, but wedge-tailed eagles must have really impressive eyesight to be able to hunt the way they do. So looking at our eagle here, there's something quite interesting about the eyes, which is a little bit strange. These eyes are made out of glass and they're meant to look like a wedge-tailed eagle's eyes, but the color is a little bit off. The color should be a bit more brown and a little bit less orange. Here we've got a skeleton, and the first thing you'll notice is it looks so small compared to the other bird behind it. And this is because, even though they were a similar size when it had feathers on, because the feathers are gone and all the muscles gone, it looks really, really small. Now what we can't see here is that if we broke these bones open, they're actually mostly hollow inside. And this is because it makes the bones really, really light, so that the birds require less effort to fly. I've actually just noticed that if you look down the top part of the beak there, you can see some of this hollow honeycombing structure that's throughout all of the bones in the bird's body. And then looking at the skull, you can just see how much of that structure is taken up by the eyes themselves, just showing how important they really are. The other really important part of the skeleton for the flight of the birds is the keel. So this big bone structure right in the middle of the bird. And it's so big because all of the muscles that power the bird's flight attach in this point. So it's really strong, really powerful. 
So the Tasmanian wedge-tailed eagles are the coolest ones in my opinion because they're bigger than all the others. So all the birds that are found on the mainland and southern New Guinea are all much smaller than the Tassie wedge-tailed eagles that we have down here. Oh yeah, go Tassie wedgies. <laughs> Why Wedgie Why with me, James Pay. Why do birds have feathers and not fur? Hmm.